Are you waiting for your letter to Hogwarts? Or do you want to drink a coffee with Chandler? Stick around and I'll explain the magic of these film locations. Why do we want to visit film locations? This is the University of the Netherlands. Do these places look familiar? It's pictures from my research, but you might recognize them from your screen. There are film locations and replica locations of popular movies and series that have also become popular tourist locations. Many people choose to visit a location that they recognize from a series or movie, a phenomenon called film tourism. But why do people go? In this lecture, I'm going to talk about what it means to be a fan, but most importantly, what it means to visit a destination related to your fandom. Now, in general, tourism is seen as an important part of modern life, something for your education, to get to know other places, to feel cosmopolitan, and so on. It's also considered a way to get away from things, take a break from your everyday life, and experience something new and exciting. Now, tourism is often built around sightseeing. Being in the same place as a famous site or an object is stressed as being crucial to tourism, even if we've seen a picture of it before and know very, very well what it looks like. You have to be physically present in the same space as it and see it with your own eyes to feel that, well, you've actually seen it. This is because, arguably, we understand places through what we call embodiment, of encountering spaces through our bodies, moving around it, feeling it. Even though we're kind of a visual society, we really comprehend places through engagement with all of the senses. It just doesn't feel real otherwise. So therefore, being at a filming location might be very different than seeing it on screen, both in terms of how it looks and how it's experienced. And for some people, these are places that need to be seen for yourself in the same way as more established tourist sites, like the Eiffel Tower or the Colosseum. And that's something we call media tourism, traveling to places because of an association with the film, television series, novel, song, or other media product. Now, I'm going to focus on film here, but there are similarities. Now, while some tourists might feel obligated to visit the really important landmarks, the real old famous ones, they don't necessarily feel a personal connection to it. Visiting the location of a favorite film or series is different. But why? It's because of fandom. It's the regular, emotionally involved consumption of a given popular narrative or text. Fandom can be seen as part of modern identity formation, which we always kind of structure around things like family, around work, around religion. We've got to add fandom to this as well. It can be used to construct a sense of who we are as a person, what we value, what emotionally affects us, what helps us understand the world and our place in it. And the things we're fans of, our objects of fandom, occupy our thoughts, even when we're not watching. If you're a fan, you can imagine what Hogwarts house you'd be sorted into, or which of the friends you get along with the best, even if the screen isn't on. And when meeting up with other people who might also be fans, you can show off your house colors. After all, it says something about you. And of course, fans know that a text is fictional, but it feels emotionally real. What fans tend to come looking for when they're at a filming location is a physical reality. And tourism is a well-recognized and accepted way of doing such a thing. Well, think of travel documentaries or postcards. We've seen it, but it's not real yet. While a film or television show might be real in an emotional sense, imagined very vividly, the experience isn't complete. It's not physical. Visiting pushes the boundaries between real and imagined, which fans like. Now, there's multiple reasons why people want to visit a location related to their fandom. The first reason being because, well, it's an accepted thing to do on holiday and becoming more normalized, especially compared to other things that fans might do. It's socially accepted. It'll make a really good story when you come back. You could take some great photographs for Instagram. It's the same reason as going anywhere, really. And then there's this feedback loop to it. The more people talk about that it's a thing to do, the more people actually think it's a thing to do, and the more credit you get coming back among your friends and family. And of course, there's the level of physical connection. We're used to watching this on television, encountering it in other ways, but now you get to really see what it's like, how similar it is, how different it is, and of course, what it's like to make it, to actually be there. The third level is paying tribute to your fandom. 
which is really important, but I think often overlooked a lot when talking about film tourism. Going there is also about acknowledging that this movie or television show means something to you. And that can be very personal, not just for showing off to others. You go there and say, I made an effort to do this because this show is meaningful. Now, whatever reasons people have or give for going, in the end, it's really about connection to the text, to your own fandom and what it means to you and to other people. Now, that might still sound a bit theoretical, but let's take a look at how this plays out for some well-known fandoms. Did you watch Game of Thrones? Even though it's already off the air, many people still visit its filming location. This fits in how accepted film tourism is as a practice. Now, the fandom of the tourists who go varies greatly. There are people who come on cruise ships and think, well, I might as well do this because I'm here, to people who deliberately plan a trip and want to mark off every location they can. However, this isn't as different as you might think. I talked to a group of Game of Thrones fans who met at a fantasy convention. They planned a trip to Dubrovnik, where they filmed a lot of Game of Thrones together, specifically to see the filming locations. But they also did this in September, when the weather is beautiful, and made it a great holiday. They went swimming, they played games, they went to restaurants, and they visited the Game of Thrones locations. A normal holiday with some extras. So it's all kind of connected. Now this example shows that film tourism is really something that people at all levels of fandoms do. The casual tourist, the hardcore fan, but also people who think, well, I'm on holiday, I can do whatever I want, I can be a fan here, even if maybe I'm not doing it as much in my everyday life. Now, in places like Dubrovnik, the film tourism experience is what I would call layered. There's the level of the text, the story that brought you there in the first place, experiencing Blackwater Bay, walking into Neris's footsteps, so on and so forth. But there's also the level of production. Where are the camera angles the crew got? What did the actors do in Dubrovnik? What was it like to film here and have this around you? And there's even the stories of Dubrovnik itself. Fans want to know about the real history much more than expected. They're interested in the real story. They want to know what this place is like as well. Game of Thrones, by bringing them to different parts of the city and giving them kind of a historical starting point, can frame this real history. In these kind of places, the reality, the fantasy, and the history mix together in interesting ways. And fans want to experience all the different levels of a filming location. However, film tourism doesn't necessarily need to be to, well, they actually did the filming. For Harry Potter fans, for example, there's a Wizarding World of Harry Potter, which is nowhere near the filming location or even the setting of the story. Feeling connected to where the actors stood or how the show was created, it's not the reason for visiting Wizarding World, which is in a theme park. Instead, another form of feeling connected to the fandom is present. When I talk to Harry Potter fans, they still see the Wizarding World as the location of Harry Potter because it was built specifically for Harry Potter and Harry Potter fans, and therefore special. It's about immersing yourself into the world of your fandom instead of the reality all around you. You can experience scenes from the movies, like buying your first wand, visiting the right shops, drinking butterbeer. And these places can make the text or film feel more real because you're having this physical, personal, embodied experience with the world. And it can also be, like going to other filming places, paying tribute, saying, Harry Potter means something to me, and I made the effort to go here. This kind of recreation is becoming pretty widespread. How many of you are familiar with the television show Friends? The funny thing about Friends is that it's been off the air longer than some of its fans have been alive. But it's as popular as ever, and the owners of the series are still creating new ex events and experiences for the fans to experience the series. Recently, there have been several events in the US and Europe created by Comedy Central or Warner Brothers, where you buy a ticket to a place where you can visit the recreated sets and take some good photos where it looks like you were there. You can see all the apartments, you can sit on the couch at Central Park, and you can buy some cool souvenirs. It's fun for fans, but it also gives Warner Brothers some control over what fans do. After all, if you want to participate in this, you have to pay them and you have to behave. It's an up-and-coming way of connecting to and marketing text, and there will probably be more of these kind of events in the future. The last example is about a connection we haven't really talked about yet, the social connection to other fans. Now, this is really evident in the fandom of a television show from the 60s called The Prisoner. 
People have been going to its foaming location, which is a place called Port Marion in North Wales, for some 40 to 50 years now, even though the show only has 17 episodes. Fans go not just to see the location itself, but to meet their friends or other prisoner fans they don't even know. The place and the people are tied up together. It's a way of connecting to the fandom without the internet and something they were doing even before the internet. After all of these decades, they come to love Port Marion deeply, and it works as an extension of their fandom. It's not only where the prisoner was made, but it's where they can gather as a fandom and see their friends every year. And because it's a place that won't be torn down, it acts as a kind of safe vault for memories of the prisoner. It's permanent, uh, unlike, well, memories of the prisoner itself. This kind of connection isn't for everyone. Not everyone wants to meet others, but the potential is there when you get places involved. What I want to show with these examples is that there are multiple reasons why people might want to visit a film place. Connecting in one way or another is the core element of it. So circling back to our main question, why do people want to visit film locations? Well, there's multiple reasons. Because people want to connect with their fandom, meet other fans, pay tribute to it, or even simply because it's more of an accepted holiday activity nowadays. But at the heart of it all is connection. The way people want to connect and how they do it is personal and can really vary, but the fans who do it find it a very valuable experience. Film tourism is therefore a growing niche in the tourism industry and increasingly the media industry as well. Moving from fans visiting filming locations on their own, mapping out with other fans where to find the right tree, the right rock, to specially ticketed and designed events and places. In the future, pandemics permitting, we should see more of film tourism of all kinds, but especially the ticketed version. After all, it's a great way to build connection between a text and its fans and an experience that fans seem happy to pay for. But what does that mean for fans, though, if one of the main ways of connecting is behind a ticket price? Thank you for watching. Thank you.